guys, welcome back. We're going to do this a little bit differently today. I've gotten over my issues from last time. Uh, so we're going to make one cocktail into three different cocktails. We're going to look at how we can riff different things, and we're going to do it based on a gimlet today per a suggestion that I got on Facebook. So we've got Prairie Organic Gin. It's not bad. Maybe not what I would have gone with, but pickings are scarce right now. We've got a bowl full of limes right here. Got some fresh blackberries, some fresh raspberries, some white sugar, and some honey. So we're going to start off, and the way we're going to flavor these is going to be two different ways. So we're going to make a raspberry gimlet, and that's going to just be muddled straight into the shaker. And then we're going to make a blackberry, honey, and lavender syrup for a variation on a bee's knees. But we're going to use lime instead of lemon, so we can kind of maximize the use of one juice. All right, so unlike the syrup that we did last time, which was one part sugar to one part water, we're working with honey. Honey has a little more viscosity than a sugar syrup does, but it's a little less sweet. So we're not going to do one part to one part because it's not really going to flavor the drink correctly. So we're going to measure out what we have here. As much as we can get out of this guy in a hurry. Just put it down and strangle it. That's how you know you got it. That noise right there is either really good news or really bad news, depending on the kind of situation you're in. So we're going to look at what we got. You probably can't see it from there, but we're at about three quarters of a cup. Now for honey, you want to do three parts to one part. So I'm going to lay the honey in the pan. And the reason I'm putting the honey in first, even though it seems like you might want to put the water in first, is because I'm going to use our water, one quarter cup, to rinse out the last of that honey in here. Right there. Give that a little bit of a swirl. And even if you're not adding other flavors with honey, you do have to break it down into water before you actually go ahead and put it into a drink because honey, when it's cold, when it's in its natural form, will not break down. All right, so we got about as much as we're gonna get out of there. Drop that in. Now we're gonna take our fresh lavender. Always works a little bit better. Gonna take these stalks. Now we're just going to strip it straight into the pan. It doesn't take a whole lot of lavender to make syrups work because we're going to be letting it sit and simmer for a minute. If you get a little bit of stem in there, it's not a huge issue because we're going to be straining this anyways. So you're going to take your thumbnail, you're going to set it right at the base, just kind of scrape all the lavender off. So that should be enough of that. Now we're going to take our blackberries. And the reason I'm doing this with blackberries instead of the raspberries is raspberries have a little bit more flavor to them. Blackberries are just kind of a cooler color. So I wanted to add a couple more components to this. So we're going to put these in the pan. And unlike the pears from last time, we're actually going to muddle these down and let the juice work itself into the syrup. cheap burner right here for about this one doesn't isn't going to take a whole lot of time lavender will over express itself so we're going to keep this one to 10 minutes and actually probably stick to it this time all right so while we're waiting on this it's already coming along nicely we're going to go ahead and start with the classic gimlet which uh, is complicated if you look up recipes a lot of people will maintain that the first one was nothing but gin and lime that's gross um, it's it's I wouldn't say gross it's harsh. If you're looking for something you can sip on and kind of is refreshing, that's not the direction you want to go. Some people will insist it comes with roses, lime juice. Those people are terrible and you should remove those people from your life as soon as you possibly can. So what we're going to do is what you'll get in most decent bars today is 
We're going to start with two ounces of our prairie gin, which actually I already put in the cup uh, while it was off camera, so we're not going to do that on camera. We're going to take one ounce of a quick simple that we just made. There it is. And that is just one part sugar, one part water. Put the water in the microwave. You don't need to do that on the stovetop. Super easy. And then we're going to get the juice of one lime. So I'm probably going to cut this part out where I go walk to the kitchen because I forgot to bring my juicer over here. But we'll see. Oh yeah, I definitely cut that. So we're going to go ahead and we want about an ounce of lime juice. Cut our lime in half. Always, always, always use fresh lime juice. I almost bought a bottle of Rose's lime juice today just to show you guys what not to get. And uh, I couldn't. It was not possible. Now usually I would go ahead and double strain this lime juice. But we're going for time today. So one half of the lime was just about exactly one ounce of lime juice. Got to seal and spill gin all over myself in the process. Now for those of you who don't have the Hawthorne strainers that I used uh, a couple videos ago, what I'm going to do is take my top tin, put it in my bottom tin. I'm going to take a tea strainer just to get all the chips of ice out of there. Pour that straight into our cocktail glass. That is a gimlet. Uh, you can do a lime garnish on it. I don't really think you have to because I, I'm not a big fan of putting a fruit on top of the same fruit. If I was going to do a garnish on this, I might go for a little bit of orange oil uh, on the peel. Or I might throw some berries in there. So, you know what? You get a raspberry! Alright, so let's give this a taste. It's, uh, it's good. It's limeade with gin, which is exactly what it's supposed to be. So now we're going to do something with a little bit more complexity. I'm going to wash these out and I'll be right back. Alright, so now we're going to do almost the same exact cocktail. We're going to make one small change to it. We're going to take our two ounces of gin. And I do this backwards, most of you at home. Start with your cheapest ingredient first, and then move on to your more expensive ones. So you would start with your lime juice. And I know I cut that lime more or less exactly in half. So we're not even going to measure this. I'm just going to juice this lime and strain the shaker. And we're going to take another ounce of our one to one sugar simple. Now we're going to take, I'm going to go for about four raspberries. Drop them straight in there. And we're going to take our muddler, which some of you at home may have noticed, is just a piece of wood. It doesn't even have to be wood, so if you don't have a muddler at home, you can use pretty much anything. You can use the back end of a spatula, you can use a wooden spoon, doesn't really matter. All we're going to do is just crush these guys up in here. Now we're going to take a couple big pieces of ice. If I had the time, I would make pretty clear ice. I do not, so we're going to use this. Still decent sized cubes, and you'll notice I'm handling it with my bare hands. It's because I wash my hands, and I know I hit this before, but wash your hands. All right, we've got that sealed, straight line on the back like we talked about last time. Ready. This time the tea strainer is doubly important because not only are you keeping shards of ice out, you're also keeping raspberry guts out. Alright, that is strained. So one simple change, obviously the color is a lot different. 
Tastes a lot different too. A little more acidic than the first one actually because raspberries have some acid of their own along with some sugar of their own so it doesn't really throw off the balance too much. It does add kind of another layer to it. And now our other syrup should be ready so we're going to start on that. Alright so our syrup is ready. We're going to go ahead and take it off the heat and we're going to strain this before we put it in the drink. Because lavender buds are not fun to get caught in your teeth. Still a little bit hot, but not so hot we can't work with it. We're just going to let that strain for a little bit while we build the rest of the cocktail. So now we've got a syrup that incorporates three different things, so we're adding a whole bunch of flavor with just one step that we just had to let sit for a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and cut another one. Slippery guy trying to get away from me. How cool would it be if I just cut a finger off on camera? That would be a way to get views. I might actually have to consider that. Go rinse this out real fast. I'll be right back. All right, and we are rinsed. So, same as the other two cocktails. Gonna take two ounces of gin. so that syrup being a little bit on the warmer side isn't going to cause too much extra dilution. Go ahead and shake this. Alright, ready to grab a glass for this guy. I decided we're going fancy on this one. We're going to give this that real easy strain that we did the last two times. And our Hawthorne strainer will be back for the next video. And there is our blackberry, honey, and lavender sour. And give that a taste. By far the best of them. Floral. It tastes like the lavender might have sat for a little bit too long. It tastes like I'm chewing on an old lady wearing lavender perfume. No, it's not that bad. Uh, it's not bad at all. Out of the three, that's definitely my favorite. It's got the most going on, the most to kind of find on your palate. If you're drinking any of these drinks and you can't taste anything, then go to your doctor because it turns out that loss of smell, loss of taste is one of the first factors that you find out when you have COVID-19. So on that note, cheers, and you guys have a great night.